thorax here and then part of it even goes into the abdomen. So esophagus is a very long structure. It begins at the junction from the oral cavity uh, and the neck and then ends into the abdomen. So it's a very long, long tube-like structure. Okay, before understanding the esophagus, let's have a little review about the digestive system that because this is the part of the digestive system. So, what are the functions of the digestive system? Is ingestion, mastication, swallowing. You have done it, oral cavity. Ingestion, then swallowing, and then mastication are the function of oral cavity, right? And then transport for the food digestion. And digestion begins, then transport is the function of esophagus. There's no digestion in esophagus. Only po food passes, from esophagus into the stomach. So digestion is the function of the stomach and then moisturizing and lubrication function of the slavery glands. We did last time, right? Slavery glands, the function is moisturizing and lubrication and then selective permeability is the function of the intestine where food is digested and out of the food, water is absorbed, proteins are absorbed, right? Carbohydrates are absorbed and you know, amino acids are absorbed and something some food material is not absorbed and the things which are not absorbed, they are excreted out as feces. So the selective permeability is the function of intestine. The moisturizing and lubrication is the function of the whole intestine starting from the slavery glands. And then food digestion starts from the stomach till the end. Transport is main function of the esophagus. Swallowing, mastication, ingestion are the functions of the oral cavity. Then absorption, again function of intestine. <coughs> secretion of hormones and enzymes. Now secretion of hormones and enzymes, again, are the functions of the gastrointestinal tract. We have a lot of cells and a lot of enzymes are coming for digestion. And a lot of other hormones coming from the mucous membrane or the epithelium of the gastrointestinal tract, which are you, not, you are not concerned with them. Now this is the digestive system or the digestive tract told you starting from the oral cavity. Then here we have the pharynx. Now this pharynx, this hole is the pharynx. Starting from here, starting from here, up to here. It has three parts. Part, now this is pharynx here. The part which is behind the nose is called nasopharynx. Then part which is behind the oral cavity, oropharynx. And part which is behind the larynx, laryngopharynx. So we have three parts. So pharynx is nothing but on the back, whatever present on the back of our oral cavity is called pharynx. Now this extends up behind the nose, nasopharynx. Behind the oral cavity, oropharynx. And little down behind the larynx, laryngopharynx. So pharynx, you know, has three parts. And the structure, you can see this tube and this pharynx almost has the same structure. The structure of the whole tube is same. I will tell you what is this structure, but the structure is the same. And then it starts the esophagus. Now you can see, esophagus is starting here, in from the neck, and goes down and enters into the thorax. This is thorax here. And passes all the way into the thorax, and then the abdomen enters into the abdomen and continues with the stomach. So esophagus is a big, big structure present in the neck and thorax, and then up to the junction of the pharynx. So we are not concerned with the oral cavity. This is just a review, oral cavity. You can see on the back is the pharynx. This all is oral cavity, which has palate and tongue and the other structure. This is nose. Behind the nose, this is nasopharynx here. So behind the nose, we have naso nasopharynx here. This is oropharynx, this is laryngopharynx. So pharynx is the biggest structure. Now, histologically, the esophagus and the pharynx, they, have, they are actually made up of three tube-like structures. How we can say that? We can say that the whole of the oral cavity, I'm sorry, the pharynx and the esophagus, they are actually three tubes. One tube, outside this is another tube, <coughs> and outside this is another tube. So these are actually, you can see there are three tubes. The most inner tube, we say, and the whole esophagus, like this, up till stomach, like this. And here is the pharynx. So this 
whole tube starting from the esophagus is actually is a thick muscular tube, it's a thick walls. It is thick muscle in its wall. It's a thick muscular tube. Even the pharynx here. A thick muscular tube. And so most thickest is the muscle. And inside the muscle, we have a thin membrane here. And outside the muscle, again we have a thin membrane here. So thick muscle layer, inside a thin membrane, outside a thin membrane. This is the whole structure. So the most inner tube is called mucous membrane or mucosa. Then this thick layer of muscles, this central tube is musculosa or the muscle layer. And the most outside layer, this is adventitia. So we have three layers. Three layers, one or three tubes, one over the other. And in, in between these, some other structures are present, but this structure persists from esophagus up to the anal canal. This is the same structure. Most inner layer, mucosa. Outside mucosa, thick layer of muscle, which is called musculosa. Mm. And outside muscle, a layer which is called as the adventitia, which is a layer of connective tissue. Now sometimes, in between these two layers, mucosa and musculosa, we have another layer here, which I make again, and this most this, this is number one, this is number two, this is number three, this is number two. So sometimes number two we also have submucosa. So four layers. Sometimes in, in, the, soft, in, in the GIT we have four layers. Mucosa, submucosa, musculosa, adventitia. These are the four layers. Remember them. It's true for the whole GIT. Clear? Okay. Now what is present where? What is mucosa? So mucosa is this mucosa here. You know that. So mucosa is mucosa is what? Is the epithelium. And below epithelium, just below the epithelium, <coughs> we have a connective tissue layer. This connective tissue layer is called lamina propria. And then we have a thin layer of smooth muscle here. And this thin layer of a smooth muscle here is called muscularis interna. These three layers together, they are known as mucosa. So mucosa means the most inner layer. Sometimes we do give a question. We put the, uh, in the MBBS, but not you. And you may have MCQ or you may have an SCQ. Describe the histological features of esophagus or describe the histological features of GIT, general outline of this GIT. So what is the general outline of GIT? The gastrointestinal tract, microscopically comprised of four layers. The most inner layer is mucosa, outside mucosa is submucosa, outside submucosa is the musculosa, and outside musculosa is adventitia. This is general plan, right? And then coming to esophagus, what is the then we give question like, and describe the features of innermost layer. So which is the innermost layer? Mucosa. So then you have to write this general plan, and most inner layer is a mucosa. Mucosa is the most inner lining, it's the most inner membrane, which is comprised of again three layers. What are these three layers? Most inside is epithelium. Outside epithelium, there's thin layer of connective tissue, lamina, Propria and then outside lamina propria there is a thin layer of muscle which is called as the musculus muscularis interna muscularis yeah. interna because we have a muscle thick layer of muscle here so this is muscularis which is outside and this is the muscle layer which is inside therefore we call it muscularis yeah. interna and sometimes we call this <coughs> muscularis um, external. externa muscularis external. externa so this is a very thin layer of muscularis interna here present. These three layers together, they are known as mucosa. They are known as mucosa. And in case of esophagus, okay, so this is the general plan, number one. Number second, you know, in the whole GIT, we have the function of the food 
to pass down, right? From oral cavity, pharynx, then esophagus, then stomach, then intestine, and the large intestine, right? So this function of the stomach uh, to, to, to transport the food from the beginning till the end, this is done with the help of muscle. But muscle needs to be contracted, right? Muscle needs <laughs> contraction. So this contraction is done with the help of the nerves, with the help of the yeah. nerves. So we need a lot of nerves in the GIT. So what happens that in the submucosa here, in the number two layer here, and in the number three layer. Now number three layer is musculosa. Now in the musculosa, this layer, we have muscle arranged two ways. Inside we have muscles, fibers arranged circularly like this. So muscles are arranged circularly. And outside we have muscles arranged longitudinally like this. So outside when we cut, they appear like this. I tell you what is this. Longitudinally. So outside muscles are arranged longitudinally and inside they are arranged circularly. What is this? This means now actually the muscle is arranged in a spiral like this. Muscle is arranged like spiral. You know a spiral? So inside and outside both. But inside the spiral is like circle is short. So it appears like circular. Appears like but outside the spiral is long. So muscle is arranged like longitudinal. Muscle arranged uh, appears like you get my point? Every one of you. Inside, the muscle is a spiral, but the spirals are very narrow spirals. So the muscle arrange appears like circularly. <coughs> but outside, the spiral is long, so appears like longitudinally arranged. Okay. How does it appear when we, when we cut the in microscope? Let's say I cut this section. So this is the muscle arranged circularly like and this is the muscle arranged like this. Now I take a section. How does this muscle appear? In section this muscle will appear, inside muscle will appear like the whole, I can see whole muscle cell like this. Smooth muscle cells. Because the muscles, most, I can see the whole length of the muscle cells, like this. But these muscles, these muscles are more spiral, so you can see, these muscles are actually arranged like this, more like this. So when I cut them, what I see, when I cut them, what I see, I see only this much part of the muscle. Only this much part of the muscle. This much part of the muscle. So what I see? So when a muscle is cut longitudinally, it appears like a round circle. Maybe nucleus here. I give you another example. Have you seen the bread? Hobbs, yes. which you will eat with the butter, right? <coughs> now this hobbs, you see slice? You see the slices? Yes. Okay. Now this one slice is what? A horizontal section. The hobbs is like this. The whole hobbs is like this. And you see the slices. Now this slice is circular section or horizontal section. One slice only. But if you cut it longitudinally, like this. So what do you see? If you cut it longitudinally, you will see the whole slice. Mm -hmm. But if you cut like this horizontally, you will see only a small piece of slice like this. But the same slice. Similarly, smooth muscle fibers. If you cut longitudinally, you will see whole muscle. But if you cut like this, you will only see small part. 
Yes. You get the point? Yes. Similarly, the muscles are arranged. When you cut like this, you will see whole length of muscle cell. But if you cut like this, you will see only small part. So longitudinally, the muscle will appear like this. When you cut circularly, you see like this. So this is how you will say that muscle arranged circularly or longitudinally. It's clear? Okay. So we have muscles now. Now this movement of the muscle needs innervation, nerve supply. So there are two muscles, there are two nerve plexuses which are present in the GIT. One plexus is present between the circular and longitudinal muscle here. This is called mentaric plexus. In between here we have muscle. In, in between we have the nerve bundles present here. And this is called mentaric plexus. And another plexus we have in the submucosa. In the submucosa we have another muscle. This is called Meissner's plexus. The submucosa, we have now how many nerve plexus we have in the GIT? What is the location number one? <coughs> Minus nerve plexus or submucosa, right? And what is the location number two? <coughs> within the muscle, within the musculosa, between circular and longitudinal muscles. And what is its name? Mindteric, means in the muscle, mindteric plexus. Why they are there? They are there because they have to supply the muscles. And, they, and the plexus which is in the submucosa supplies the mucous membrane and the glands. Because you know, digestion. So for digestion we need secretion. And for secretion we need a stimulus. And the stimulus come through these nerves. It's clear? So we have two nerve plexuses, one in submucosa and one in, in the, within the muscle, which is called mindteric plexus. So this is the general structure of the uh, whole GIT. Now let us see about the esophagus. So what does it say? Mucosa, we have epithelium, lamina propria, and muscular mucosa. Then we have submucosa. In submucosa, we have a plexus, which is called Meissner's plexus. And then we have muscular propria or muscular externa, where we have another plexus, which is called mentaric plexus. And then, or plexus of Arbosch. And the, finally, adventitia outside, most outside disconnected. <coughs> now listen, you know, after brain, after central nervous system, brain and spinal cord, the largest number of the neurons or the nerve cells is present in GIT. Where? GIT. Largest number of the nerve cells or the neurons is present in our GIT. Where? In mentaric plexus and submucosal plexus. You know, sometimes you say gut feeling. This is my gut feeling. It's a common English, you know. In common English, sometimes you say, when you feel something, you say, this is my gut feeling, then this for example, you say, tomorrow, mother will be there. How do you say? I, I think that tomorrow will be rain. But sometimes you say, this is my gut feeling, tomorrow will be rain. Means what? I think that. How can you think from your gut? Why this develop this sentence? Because there are largest number of neurons present in our GIT. So we can, I think. This is my gut feeling, tomorrow will be rain. Means, I think that. So this largest number of neurons is present in muscle and submucosa. And a lot of diseases come because of this problem with these nerves. So, now the, let's come to the esophagus. I am sure. So this is the plan I told you. Now mucosa, just look at this is the most, these are the four layers. This is mucosa. Then this is muscle layer and outside adventitia and here we have submucosa also which you cannot see, I can see here. You can see the mucosa, this is, this is the mucosa here, epithelium. You can see the mucosa has thrown into folds, you can see the folds? Yes. The folds inside present in the mucosa. And submucosa, so this is submucosa here. In the submucosa, what is present? You can see in the submucosa, blood vessels are present, connective tissue is present. In the submucosa, I told you, nerve plexus is present. Submucosal nerve plexus is present in the submucosa. You can see. It, and this sub, and this nerve plexus is supplying to glands. Supplying to yes. glands.
you can see this muscle there so the okay this is the muscularis this is a thick muscle there inside circular outside longitudinal and between the two and the flexus you can see mantaric flexus so this is mesial flexus this is mantaric flexus this is the muscle there Now let's see the epithelium of the. We can find ourselves to esophagus. So I tell you, the epithelium of the. I skip tongue. This presentation is for the whole GIT. So let's go to the esophagus. Now esophagus. Let's come to the esophagus. Esophagus. I start from mucosa and all. We see all four layers in esophagus. What is that? These four layers in esophagus. In esophagus, <laughs> in esophagus, these remember these four layers: one, two, three, and four. Let's see mucosa first. Number one, mucosa. In esophagus, mucosa means epithelium. And then we have lamina propria, connective tissue, and then we have vascular interna. Now the epithelium in this in the esophagus is stratified squamous. It stratified squamous. This is important. This is the only part where we have stratified squamous oral cavity. <laughs> Non-cretinized oral cavity and esophagus. We have non-cretinized stratified squamous epithelium. Why? I told you the function of esophagus is not digestion. The function is transport. Yes. So when food passes through the esophagus, it put lot of pressure. You know, sometimes you eat the whole burger in one bite. <laughs> so you need, it needs to be protected. So lot of pressure on the mucosa. Lot of pressure when you. Eat a big bite. This gives you pressure on your esophagus. So this pressure has to be sustained by the mucosa. So the mucosa epithelium becomes thick like this. Stratified squamous, thick epithelium. Stratified squamous. See, look here. Thick epithelium. Stratified squamous. And this thick epithelium, the superficial cells are squamous cells. See? And then you can see in the Lamina propria connective tissue. So we have loose connective tissue. So number one, we have in the mucosa. This is the basement membrane. We have basal cells, and then we have epithelial cells like this. This thick epithelium, all squamous. And then we have this basement membrane, and below the basement membrane we have loose connective tissue. And in the loose connective tissue, here we have lymphocytes present. Aggregate of lymphocytes present, and plus we have some glands also present because the glands come from this epithelium, so glands are also present. Zero mucous glands, both serous and mucous glands are present. So we have lamina connective tissue, we have lymphocytes, and we have glands in the lamina propria, and then we have another layer of connective tissue here. And this another layer of connective tissue is called submucosa. Okay, I'm sorry. Then we have a thin layer of muscle, muscularis interna. And I will tell you what is its function. And I will show you the section of the esophagus. I will tell you the function. So a thin layer of muscle, muscularis interna. Plus we also have elastic fibers here. So the connective tissue is fibroelastic, collagen fibers plus elastic fibers, both here. Then we have the layer of the submucosa and the layer of the connective tissue. And we have nerve plexus here. We have junk muscle uh, nerve aggregation of the nerve fibers here. These are called as the mesenteric plexus. So we have mesenteric plexus here. And then we have muscle, inner circular, outer longitudinal. Muscular, and finally again the connective tissue layer, which is the adventitia. So you can see here, 
epithelium, steroid squamous, then lamina propria. You can see duct of a gland here. A gland is also present. And lymphocyte aggregate, which we see glands are here. These are the glands. Glands. We have blood vessels. You can see a vein, it is artery with the blood. Artery with the blood. Because epithelium is avascular, it does not have blood vessels. So the, the nutrition comes from blood vessels which are present in lamina propria or connective tissue here. So you can see blood vessels here, oxygen diffuse here to here. Oxygen diffuse here to here. So this oxygen goes here, the lower ba the basal layer of epithelial cells dividing, dividing. But this oxygen becomes less and less as the layers increase. So the upper layers are dying. Upper layers are dying, dying at the same time and replaced by the cells which are coming from the lower layers. This is the mechanism of the replacement of the cells, right? And then you can see the <coughs> glands, the serumucous glands here. And then come here. This is the muscular smiposy, a thin layer of muscle present here. A thin layer of muscle is present here. And then we have the submucosa. In the submucosa again we have glands. And then we have the mesnus fluxus, which we don't see here. Okay. This is not ten. Continue <laughs> because this is one lecture finished. In the adventitia, we have a lot of you know the lot of lumen. You know lumen. You can see the lumen is not rounded. It is star-like. Why? Because the mucous membrane, this mucous membrane, is thrown into fold comes inside the lumen. So the lumen here is not rounded like I made it here. In esophagus, the lumen is not rounded. <coughs> the esophagus, the lumen, this is the lumen here. And these are the four layers. So this lumen inside is not rounded like this. It is thrown into folds like this. So it becomes a star-like such thing. So it's into fold, this fold and this fold, it comes into the lumen. Why? Because, and this is closed all the times. This is closed all the time. It opens mainly, food comes. When food comes, push it and it opens. So it is closed all the time and it's thrown into folds, like these folds, with the help of what? Because what is present here? A layer of muscle is present here. And I told you fibroelastic connective tissue, elastic fibers are present here. So elastic fibers plus muscularis interna, these two structures, they push and make the folds. So the folds are present in the mucous membrane, make folds inside, in the lumen. So you can see the mucous membrane is making folds inside here, making folds. And these folds are because of the, because of the, Fibroelastic connective tissue and because of the muscularis interna. Let me show you some more things. Okay. Look here. This is esophagus. Again. Now here it shows very clear picture. You can see this bluish, all connective tissue. So this bluish is all connective tissue, you can see this connective tissue, 